Hi, I'm Terry. Welcome to Memories and Moments, an ongoing series presented by the Historical and Heritage Society of Key Biscayne. I recently took a stroll down Crandon Boulevard, reminiscing through time with Councilmember Mort Freed. I was able to visualize Crandon Boulevard through his eyes, as it was in the early 1950s. Please join us. Okay, Morty, now we're in front of the Calusa Playhouse. I understand it has quite a history. Yeah, it goes back. It goes back to the old coconut plantation uh -huh. that is now where Key Colony is built. That was the, the nine-hole modified golf course. Uh -huh. And it was the dining room for the workers in the coconut plantation. Well, this was a dining room, a freestanding dining room? A freestanding dining room, and the kitchen was attached to it behind it in the golf course area or the oh. key colony area. Okay. Then it became St. Christopher's by the Sea for a couple of years. Right. And when they finally got the land and the money to build their present building, this was turned over to the Key Biscayne Music and Drama Society and we put a stage in and we put enough room in there for 99 chairs. Sometimes we'd put them down the side and get a couple of hundred people. Uh -huh. uh, Dr. Handworker and his wife Alma were able to arrange to have it moved from the coconut plantation up here and this is where it's been ever since. My word, how, about how big is the uh, building itself? How many square foot do you think it is? Well, let's say enough to put in a hundred chairs, a stage, no wings. Uh, if we really needed something, we opened the two back doors and went that direction. I couldn't give you an idea. I'm not an architect. I'm just an old attorney. That's all. <laughs> but it was big enough for 99 chairs. That it sounds good enough for me. It was big enough for 99 chairs. And if we really had a blockbuster, we'd bring in more chairs and close out the aisles. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, the reason why they moved it over here was to preserve the building. Is that with the thought behind it? Well, they were getting ready to build a golf course, person's cases for downtown where it really is important. The Calusa Playhouse, was this the main uh, source of entertainment for everybody on the island? Well, for the people on the island, yes. If you wanted other things, you had to go on to the mainland. But we put on at least three plays a year during the time, musicals and drama and comedies. And it went very well until I guess it was in the late 70s at that time. I guess a group of kids who had nothing better to do broke in there. They stole all the trophies we had won in the 4th of July parade for having the best floats. Uh, they tore the place up and we couldn't use it for a while. And then another group later on got in there and set a fire oh and gosh. what's left is what's left. It was made out of Dade County pine, which is almost as strong as steel. Oh my god. You goodness. can't drive nails in it when it's set and solid. Right. And we just had no place to go. And there were I guess no funds to rebuild it or to recreate it? Well I understand that the county is thinking of rebuilding it in its original condition. Uh, not really as a theater, but as a building representative of the time uh, back when they were using it in the plantation and supposedly moving it into the quiet garden area of uh, Crandon Park well, where some other buildings are going to be. Right. Well, that would be good because, you know, it's a part of the Key Biscayne history, so that would be oh, no at least question. something to keep it then. No oh. question. Okay. Well, I guess we're off on our, on our route, so well, let's go. Let's go and uh, see what else there is to rec recollect okay. about uh, Key Biscayne in the 1950s. Sounds like fun. Thank you. Marty, you were telling me that this was the original entrance or the only entrance to Key Biscayne? Yes. Crandon Boulevard was a two-lane highway. Uh -huh. 
and when you came down to there, it split in this big circle here. And then you hit the two-lane Crandon Boulevard. Okay. And people coming off the key didn't know that. So if they went to Hurricane Harbor Lounge right. and didn't go across to the outside off the island lane, we had some horrible accidents Oh here. my gosh, that's terrible. It certainly was. And this was it. And the first time I came to the key, uh -huh. I could come up to here and there was a barricade because Crandon Boulevard was nothing but a dirt road and it had rained the days before and the trucks going down, you couldn't even ride on it. Oh my gosh. And this was what, 1951? This was 1951. No, the first time we came here was in December of 1950 because that's when the first McAlad came out in the Miami Herald at that time. And, uh, you know, we'd been all over, Key, all over Dade County looking for a place to live. Mm -hmm. And this was very, and, very nice. Well, we never saw it in December of 1950. Uh -huh. It wasn't until the second McAlad came out in May of 51 that Joy and I came back here and finally found the house we were going to buy. Dirt Road, no, it was pretty special. Dirt Road, well, it had then, by that time, it had been leveled off mm. and they'd put down the rock and basically it was just a crushed rock road. Can you tell me what, across the street, what that was? Well, what is now known as the Pankey Institute uh -huh. was Gabriel's Texaco Station. Gabriel's Texaco, okay. And uh, Larry uh, would, was a mechanic. Yeah. Uh, he would take care of whatever business there was and uh, behind Larry's Texaco station mm -hmm. in the late 50s Bill Merrill who is Bicycle Bill yeah. had a shack back there where he was fixing bicycles and repairing them and now as you know he's got a great store in the shopping center. He sure does but he started out over there at the Texaco station. He started station. out behind the Texaco station. And now where Gabriel's, where, where the Pankey Institute is. Right. And of course, across the street mm -hmm. from Gabriel's, on the west side, was a Howard Johnson's hot dog and ice cream shop. Oh, why don't we walk up there and see that spot? We shall. Okay, now this is the infamous Texaco station. That was not infamous, that was the Texaco station. <laughs> and behind it, Right. was Bicycle Bill's repair, bicycle repair shop. And was that the only gas station on the island? No, the no, you had a golf station right on the corner now where the present Exxon station is. Uh -huh. And you had a gas station down at the corner of Brandon and McIntyre. So there were three gas stations there on the island? There were three gas stations at the island here. at the time. And later on, very quickly, there became a fourth, which was the original Exxon station where the hardware store is now. Okay, well, we'll get there later. What's behind us? This is La Coretta, but what was it back then? Well, if you can see the red roof there. Yeah, I see that. That was the size of the Howard Johnson's ice cream and hot dog place. All the rest of this was added. The, the building was just hot dogs and ice cream? I, and yeah. So they thought, being next to Crandon Park, they had a captured audience. Oh, good but thinking. they forgot that there was a concession in Crandon Park oh. which served ice cream and hot dogs. So they didn't get the clientele they thought they'd get. They didn't get the clientele they thought they did, and they finally sold it off, and uh, it became a number of other things. Um, so Carl wasn't Simpson, here. who used to have uh, the S&W market, mm -hmm. uh, opened up a barbecue place. And he sold it to us. Now it's owned by the present owners. I see. So Howard Johnson was just a couple of years that it was there? I saw, yeah, they were just here. 
Uh, we came in in 51. Mm -hmm. I think Howard Johnson was out by 55. Ah, well, I like the red roof. That's, that remained. That remains. That's... Okay, so let's take a walk and finish our tour. We're going to go up to what? Uh, what we're are we going, going to go next? up to the Hurricane Harbor Lounge and where the Merkels had their offices. That sounds fantastic. And beyond that, we had the Gulf Station, oh, okay. not the Exxon. The Gulf, okay. That's the Hurricane Harbor Lounge, am I right? That was the Hurricane Harbor Lounge, the way you see it. The only thing I believe that was changed was that top facade. But it's the same building, is it's that what you're saying? It's the same building, the same depth. Great. On the corner here and down where the uh, liquor store was, yeah. they were the original Mackle construction offices. Oh, then the liquor store became the infamous Key Biscayne Lounge. <laughs> Don't walk up to the door at night because somebody was getting knocked out of it. Oh my goodness. Oh, it was a great place to go. Charlie Samoth was the piano player in there. Yeah. And we used to have music every night to accompany the fights. Oh, the fights. <laughs> and of course you were there, right? You just observed. Uh, I just observed. <laughs> you just observer of it. I didn't get my broken nose from in there. I had it up before. That was that. someplace else. And how long was this here, the, the lounge? Well, uh, Hurricane Harbor Lounge was here until, uh, I guess, until Stefano bought it. Oh, okay. So it's many, Which, many years, I guess. Oh, yeah, quite a number of years. It wasn't any longer. I think it had been sold. It wasn't any longer owned by the Mackles. Mm -hmm. Of course, when the Mackles owned it, you could get a salad, choice of three soups, Soup. a steak, yeah. a rosin baked potato, right. dessert, and coffee. Okay, for how much? For the much? ridiculous, expensive price of four ninety five. Oh my gosh, where are they now? <laughs> <laughs> Years gone. Years gone. Yeah. Morty, you were telling me that um, this was a gas station here, but it wasn't this discount gas. What was it? No, it was a Gulf gas. Gulf gas. And that's where the construction ended uh -huh. until you got down to McIntyre. Everything behind this was mangrove. Oh, my gosh. And this is the original building of the Gulf station? This is the original building. There was no... Uh, Cuban restaurant, nothing was there, as I said. It was mangrove. Oh, mangrove. And this and is a this, cool... And this street, yeah. Harbor, Drive, Harbor Drive, only came in up until that second tree. Oh, my gosh. So we're here on the corner of Crandon and Harbor. Right. So you had the Howard Johnson, and you had the construction Hurricane office. Harbor Lounge. Hurricane Harbor. The, and then you had the Gulf Station. And the infamous keyhole. And the keyhole, right, the keyhole. Oh, that's most important. I, so I've been hearing it. It's quite a place. And so what was on that side of the road? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. The mangroves almost came up to Crandon Boulevard, but the ground was a little higher, but nothing was built there until you got down about where the Jamaica Inn used to be, which is now... Linda B's, uh -huh, and there was, there was one thing there. Okay, what was that? It was like a, it was a soft ice cream place about the size of a phone booth. Oh my gosh, I bet that was very popular though. Oh, very popular. We had nothing else, really. And then the Howard Johnson, they weren't in for very long, so. Well, they were, no, they weren't. They, as I said, they became Something when they else. gave up, I don't know what went in there. Maybe soft ice cream was more popular. At the time, and they didn't stay there too long either, Okay, by the now way. you told me there was a motel around here somewhere. Is that down the way a piece? It was down the way a piece where the library is now. Okay, well let's head on out that way then. Okay, let's do that. I think we're at, I think we're at what is known as the Key Colony area. Uh, on Harbor, uh, on uh, Crandon Boulevard, and where this Sharonburg's new building is, mm -hmm. was a motel. Oh, okay, so we had another motel on the island. Well, yes, 
I don't, there was another one back there, but this was a motel. Right. And it was down in the ground. Mm -hmm. When I say in the ground, it was about four or five feet below the level of Cranon Boulevard. And when there was a heavy rain, right. we would have a lake. Oh my gosh. So the owner put in four pumps on each corner of his motel. And when the rain started to build up, the pumps would go to work and pump everything out of here into the surrounding land. Well, that sounds like a mess to me. Well, it worked very well for him. Uh, later on, when this sort of fell back as a motel, mm -hmm. it became the rooms were turned into business areas, oh, like okay. a printing shop or offices whatever people wanted as long as they paid the rent sure. and then in in the 90s uh, the owners put it up for sale and Fritz Scherenberg who built Key Colony bought the land tore down what was here and it got filled in and then we have what is here at the present. Oh, it was a ball field for a while for the, kid, a for, a while, for the kids on Key Biscayne. Yeah. And then, everything was torn down at one point. Oh, yes. Torn down. torn down, leveled, filled off, grass, became a great ball field. Village paid for it. And uh, then it was taken back to build the present building. It's beautiful now. Beautiful. Oh, yes. He's done very well. Okay, so now you're going to take us towards the other motel. Well, the, the other library. motel was down by the library. On the other side of the street. On the know. other side, on the east side of Crandon. Uh -huh. And it was built right up where the lake is, where the, the library lake. Right. And uh, behind that, there wasn't very much until you got down close to the ocean. And I believe it was Finley Matheson who owned that part of Crandon Boulevard. And he had several octagon-shaped buildings down by the ocean, connected by boardwalks because the land was low and wet. And you could walk out to the beach and it was just a beautiful getaway place. Relaxing and beautiful. Okay, here we go. Okay, Mort, we're on Crandon Boulevard and Sinesta Drive. But Linda B's, but what it was originally the Jimmy It Dan? was no, there was nothing there. There was supposed to be a road, an extension of Heather Drive okay. coming to Crandon Boulevard, but they never finished it. And Linda B's was in the middle of the parking lot. Oh, it was in a different location, right in the middle of the parking lot. Oh, yes, because that came later on after Linda B's sort of disappeared. We had the same... Oh, I'm sorry, I said Linda B, but the Jamaica Inn... The Jamaica Inn was in the middle Which, of the... in the middle, uh -huh. and on the north side of the Jamaica Inn was the famous pub. And what was the name of that? It's called the pub. Oh, just the pub? Yeah, you know, it's part of Jamaica Inn, the English approach. And as you walked in and looked up, the whole ceiling was covered with pewter tankards yeah, for that beer? people bought, had their names engraved on it. And when you walked in, the bartender would reach up with a stick and pick it off the ceiling yeah. and hand it to you, and you'd tell him what you wanted in it. And he'd fill it up. And he'd fill it up or make up the drink, whatever. And when you left, yeah. they'd wash it and put it back up. Stick it for, for the next time. For the next time. And uh, it was a great place. They had uh, delicious steaks, mm. uh, much less expensive in the pub than in Jamaica Inn. But it was a great place to meet and uh, have fun. And the Jamaica Inn was the main restaurant, and then the pub was uh, the like pub a bar was, on the side? The pub was on the side, mm -hmm. but I think the pub was important to the residents of Key Biscayne, where Jamaica Inn 
was the destination of the people off the island. Oh, I understand. It was more of a hangout place for everybody. It was a hangout place for us, beside the keyhole, which is down the road a bit. Down the road. What happened to the building? It got destroyed at one time or torn down, I guess? It got torn down. It was changed from Jamaica in an English type into a Spanish Mexican type restaurant mm -hmm. which didn't go over right. and then it evolved into the shopping center I imagine it evolved into this that we have and what is now Linda B's okay so between here the old Jamaica Inn and heading south on Crandon what was the next stop was there anything no along the, the way? next stop was the gas station on uh, McIntyre and Grandin. Nothing in between? No. Uh, mangroves? Was there just dirt? Uh... Well, yeah. the mangroves hadn't come all the way up here. As I said, this was uncapped high ground. Uncapped high ground. Well, high ground is important because it is an island. Right. Lord, we just passed the village green. Uh, what was, there's something important about the village green. What was it, a coconut plantation or something? Well, like that? The whole nine and a half acres right. was vacant. The south three acres right. was the coconut plantation that they got agricultural zoning on. And the north end mm -hmm. was just commercial that paid very expensive taxes. And the property was owned by Mr. Rebozo and a gentleman by the name of Apfelnap. And it so happened that BB's main portion of the property was the south portion where the agricultural zoning was. He did pretty well with that one then. Well, you know, he was a pretty sharp businessman. I give him all the credit for taking advantage of every angle he could. And I bet it was beautiful. Legally. Well, that's true. I bet it was beautiful too with all those coconuts. Oh, well, the coconut. they never really got high. I mean, he put them in there, they were just nothing, and I guess they may have been 8 to 10 feet at the time, if that high. But it was considered agricultural, and that's what happened. And how long was it a coconut plantation? Well, until the village bought it in uh, 1993 oh. and made the village green out of it. Oh, for several years then? It was like oh, yes. A long oh, yes. Time it was. And it was put up for sale in 90. And I was coming to a village meeting, mm -hmm. the second council meeting of the village. And as I passed the square and the Galleria, there were nothing but empty stores. And I looked at that coconut plantation and I said, they want to sell this for more of what we have that's empty. So I went to the meeting and I said, Council, I suggest the village buy the Rebozo property. Good suggestion. I was okay. backed by Joe Rasco who seconded it and the council bought it unanimously. And, the rest and is in 94 we got it. All right. Okay, we're at the corner of Crandon Boulevard and McIntyre. Yes. This was what, a gas station? This was a gas station. I forget the original owners, Tony and John, were the original owners. And then John left, Tony took it over, and then a real estate man named Jerry Clark took it over. And then it was finally sold to Tony, who kept it for a great number of years. And he was getting ready to leave the island. He put it up for sale, and the village bought it to tie it in with the village compound here. Oh, okay. The fire department, the administration building, right. the community center. Oh, okay. I hope it'll be a quiet garden for adults. <laughs> we have taken care of the children with the village green mm -hmm. and St. Agnes and God knows what all. We need a place for people like me to sit down and <laughs> play choir. dominoes or checkers but just talk in a beautifully designed and landscape corner. Sounds good to me. Now, if we cross the street here, okay. 
Originally, it was blank land. All this know. was blank, just, just empty just, land? Just empty land. Okay. Then along came Chief, Chief Harmon, who was down in the shopping center. His Chief, wife. Chief Seaf Seafood? Se Chief Seafood, oh, okay. which was Chief's bait and tackle shop. All right. And he ran that for a number of years. And then the land got into Bibi's hands. B.B. Rebozo. B.B. Rebozo, and he built a gas station, and later on it became a Cuban restaurant. The gas but station became a Cuban restaurant. The, the gas station was there, yeah. but the Cuban restaurant became more important. Oh, okay. And then in, well, after we bought the Village Green, we decided we were going to put our community center here and we purchased that three and a half acres from the Rebozo's estate for uh, three and a half million dollars. That was a good investment, I think. Oh, it certainly was. Of course, that cost them nothing. The Village Green ran about $100,000 when he bought it and he sold it for nine and a half million. Oh my So word. that's a pretty good investment. I would say so. And uh, there was nothing west of here at that time. Absolutely nothing. They were starting Island House. Mm -hmm. And there was a building there showing the apartments, a model and a right. sales like a sales center. Right. But Other than that, nothing, nothing, nothing else. else here uh, except for Finley Matheson's octagon buildings down by the ocean. We've come a long way, haven't we? Oh, we've come a devil of a long way with a lot of arguments, a lot of controversy, but it all ended up with beautiful Key Biscayne. That's the most important. That's the most important. Cody, a few minutes ago we passed the village green. Yes. And we came up here to the gas station. But I think you mentioned to me that there was something very important across from the village green. At oh that time. yes, I'm sorry. Across from the village green. Right. A lady by the name of Marilyn Revere. Okay. Owned the barn. A barn. That was part of the original Matheson development, undevelopment. Which was in front of the workers' uh, eating place uh -huh. and kitchen, and she kept uh, her horses there, and the original fire engine. A fire engine. A fire engine, that I believe Chief Gilbert has gotten from the fireman who kept it in his house in his backyard all these years. Incredible. It's going to be refurbished, refinished, mm -hmm. and look like a brand new 1800 and something fire engine. Oh, and it's the original fire engine that used to be over here. That used to be there. And behind where, where the dining room was, mm -hmm. behind that there was a building that became the Little Island Playhouse where mothers used to take their kids to leave them and they could go off the island shopping mm -hmm. or work or whatever they wanted to do. Well, like a little daycare center. Like a little daycare center. Well, that's yes, important to have. We were right up on it at that time, you know. Sure you were. I wasn't, but they were. <laughs> and I don't know, there wasn't very much in this area. The beach club had come into existence by that time. Okay. That was given by the Mackles in, I believe, 1951. Their corporation was called the Rory Corporation that owned that land. And that was a gift to the village? That was a gift to the homeowners. To the homeowners. You had to be a Mackle homeowner in order to become a member of the beach club. Over the years, that has dissipated. The Mackles owned a motel down at the southern end of the island where um, CVS Pharmacy is now. Oh, okay. Or where that group of uh, mo uh, condominiums beyond the uh, CVS 
and that was owned by the Mackles, and they had seven uh, permits to get become members of the beach club. Oh, that's good. Well, Only it was seven, a Mackle. It was a Mackle development. They we they defended their position. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, the Key Biscayne Hotel uh, was being built. The only thing when I came was the northern, um, I forget what you call it. They were rooms. Right, okay. Like Silver Sands is today. Just one story or two story. A single, single story, like a motel type. Like a motel. And yeah. was the Silver Sands there then also, or did that come later? That came a little later. Okay. That came later. Uh, that came before the Sinesta, which came in, if I remember correctly, the mid-60s. Mm -hmm. uh, the Silver Sands was there, and it was a great place. You had Archibald playing the, ba the uh, guitar yeah. up on the second floor. Okay. You had a nice restaurant down on the first floor. Yeah. Beautiful swimming pool, great bar, and a great place to meet with your girlfriends. Oh. <laughs> okay, I bet everybody did, right? Another oh, place. Oh, uh, yes. Either your girlfriends or your wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Right. More, we're in front of the police department parking lot. What was here before? Well, it's not just the police department. It's for the employees of the village. Oh, okay. But before it became this parking lot. It's where the fire department had their two trailers yeah, okay. that they completely complained about and they had every right to complain because the things were moldy and horrible and everything. But before that, right. this was the main water supply for the village of Key Biscayne. There were two half million gallon tanks here. Whoa. When we first came to the Key, all we had was the one line coming out. And as the key grew, the use of the water coming from over in Miami mm -hmm. was so low you couldn't take a shower. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. We complained right. and finally the water department decided the way to do it was during the night they would fill the tanks and during the day we would take advantage of them. You had lots of water then. We had enough water to go until they put in new lines and bigger pipes. How high were the tanks above ground? Oh God, they must have been... It's top of that tree. Oh, pretty big then. Oh yes, huge. And were they on stilts or was the... No, the they were the built ground? right on the ground. Right, even with the ground? Yes, ma'am, and then just big green round monsters just rising up that high. An all full of fresh water for our showers. All full of fresh water. A million gallons. That's a lot of water. You Where are we? We're at the shop. We're at Crandon Boulevard and the shop and and the old shopping center. Okay, go ahead. Now we're at the shopping center on Crandon Boulevard. It's um, I guess you people will now call it the Winn Dixie Center. Now you're telling me that this center was here when you first moved here in the When 50s? I moved, first moved here, it went from what was Vernon Sundry Shop, not drugstore. Sundry Shop. Vernon Sundry Shop, okay. up here to the Kai's Company. Okay, and, and, and that's all there was? That's all there was. All the rest of this came a bit later, and the far north piece mm -hmm. came in, well, when, when, Dixie, when, when Dixie moved in, which was in uh, the late 90s, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, what were the businesses that were along here when you first moved in? Well, as I said, Dick, uh, Harry Vernon, Dick and, and Harry's father, right. opened up the sundry shop waiting for Dick to graduate from the University of Florida <gasps> drug school mm -hmm. to become a druggist. Next to that... I think that was Chiefs, was it? No, no, Chiefs was somewhere entirely different. Uh, well, let let me think. There was a, a, a travel agent here, mm -hmm. Jim Morasso, and 
his partners. Uh, there was a beauty shop, which was very popular with the women on the island. Yeah. Uh, there was a, uh, can't remember, you know, you're taxing my memory. Uh, later on, when this came in, Dr. Handworker's office was right in the corner where Sushi Siam is. Now that was added on? That was an added on That section. was added on in the 50s. Mm -hmm. Dr. Handworker was hired by the Mackle brothers originally to take care of their employees who got hurt. And he found this area so nice, mm -hmm. he put his practice here. Oh, wonderful. Decided and to stay And then out. discussed it with the Mackles. People were buying homes, moving on the island. So they decided to build the rest of this and had Dr. Handworker. It had uh, the men's shop. Is it the same men's shop or a different one? As far as I know, the, the present owner is the son of the original. That's the uh, Burns men's shop, uh huh? Right. Then up where that uh, Latin American restaurant is we passed earlier, right. that was Hap's. Uh, bakery. Oh, bakery, okay. And, bake, and Hap was here to get and bake cakes and rolls and bread mm -hmm. for the Key Biscayne Hotel. Oh, that's important. So fresh daily, I'm sure. Fresh daily, and we used to bring our kids down here every Saturday morning because mm -hmm. Hap would come out with rolls like that, and then Mrs. Hap would be nice enough yeah. to sprinkle them with chocolate all over the top. Oh, everybody loves chocolate. It was chocolate. beautiful. And then right after that, uh -huh. uh, Carl, who had been down here with the shopping center next to the drugstore, got the store under Winn-Dixie. There was another big store there. Mm -hmm. And we had the S&W supermarket. S&W Super, now that's Carl that's, that you talked about. That's Carl? Simps Carl Simpson. I can't remember what the W was. Very nice guy, great butcher. Mm -hmm. so when we moved mm -hmm. here, across the street, mm -hmm. there was nothing there except jungle. Just jungle. Just jungle. There was a road going down, uh, which is not there anymore, mm -hmm. down to the villas. The mm -hmm. only thing on the ocean were the North Villas. And Villas were little apartments? Well, or little apartments or little two-story or one-story places that were being rented by the Mackles while they were thinking about building a hotel. Mm -hmm. Kids, all the kids in the island used to go in there and get lost. Oh my God, and that's what now is Ocean Club. Now is Ocean Club and uh, Park, yeah, all Ocean Club because that was all the um, Key Biscayne Hotel property. I understand, but originally when you came here, it was just all raw land with just vegetation? A lot of vegetation, beautiful pools that had been built sometime, I guess, by the Mathesons uh, with tropical fish. Mm. Kids used to have a ball in there. Then they decided to build, I think, the South Villas came the next group, mm -hmm. and then they finally built the Key Biscayne, the old Key Biscayne Hotel. And was that a very big hotel, the Key Biscayne Hotel? Well, at the time, it was considered very big. I can't remember how many rooms, but if I remember, it was like four or five stories, uh, swimming pool, tennis courts. This was here. here. Yeah. This was here, not unisex, though. <laughs> <laughs> the travel agency was here. here. I can't remember. No, that was a uh, jewelry came in later. What was that original? This was the original market, the S and W market. Oh, okay. Carl Simpson and his buddy. Right. And that's it. And Blockbusters was Vernon's originally Vernon's sundry shop, and then when Dick got out of school. It became Vernon's Drugstore. Oh, and it had the best chocolate malts in Dade County. <laughs> That's good to know. Oh, yes.
This is the corner of Wood and Crandon Boulevard at the end of the sh old shopping center. Right. And what was across the street? Our one uh, supermarket, Carl's, which was a chain in Dade County, mm -hmm. and then it became Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride, okay. And that. I forget what else, and then it finally ended up as it is now, CVS. I think it was Hyde Park there for a while. If it, I'm not mistaken, it may have a few been. Years ago. It may have been. I have no and now recollection it's CVS. of that. Uh -huh. CVS. And these came in, oh, before CVS came in. Um, of course, uh, so pizza was there forever. Oh, that was there even when it was the Carl's Market. Oh, yeah, yeah. That must be an old chain then. No, it's, well, yeah, they have one here and they have one up in St. Lucia and they have uh, one or two in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was run by uh, the Swartz family. Oh, all right. Wendy and Barbara Swartz and Wendy. So you had uh, the grocery store, then you had the pizza parlor, parlor next door. And we had a uh, dry cleaner in the between the two of them. And oh, that's important. Whatever else we had there, I have no recollection. So that center was here, and the one here was here this yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. And beyond the shopping center where La Faire is now. Yeah. That was a Mackle. Motel. Another motel? Yeah, well, you had the one up there and this one. There are right. only two of them. And because it was owned by Mackle, mm -hmm. the motel was entitled to seven memberships in the Key Biscayne Beach Club. Well, so the hotel could have, could they give it to their guests? Is they could give it to their guests to come in. And as I understand it, when the motel was sold, mm -hmm. it was sold with that and there's seven owners of those condominiums who can be members of the beach club. Now, which seven? I haven't the slightest idea. They'll have to draw, go for right. draw on that one. Right. And then you go beyond that across the street and where the hardware store is now, that was a great Texaco station. That was, was, that was a Texaco station? A Texaco station. So at that time, how many gas stations were on the key? Well, we had the Texaco and we had uh, Tony and John's, and we had uh, Gabry's up where uh, the dental place is now. Mm -hmm. And across the street, we had a Gulf station. So were there four gas stations uh, on the island? Yes. I four. guess it was necessary then. Tanks were smaller? Tanks were smaller. Gas was cheap. <laughs> Remember, you could get it for like 30 cents a gallon. Oh, my. Don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs>